When last we left the House Republican caucus, they were flirting openly with the idea of anointing Donald Trump as their speaker, as speaker of the House for the entire United States. This is the man, of course, who sicked a mob on that same Capitol building in an attempt to violently topple the duly elected government, a man who has since been indicted on 91 criminal counts, including for those events, across four jurisdictions. They were actively talking about choosing him to lead the United States House of Representatives, to make him second in line to the presidency. That is until about 9.30 last night, when Republican Congressman Troy Nels of Texas announced that he, quote, just had a great conversation with President Trump about the speaker's race, and he is endorsing Jim Jordan, the congressman from Ohio. The ex-president himself followed it up with the middle of the night post, confirming he does indeed think that Jordan will be a great speaker of the House and has his complete and total endorsement. God, that's a long post. Now, to a very small degree, tiny sliver, I'll take what I can get these days. This is something of a relief, honestly, because I think Donald Trump as Speaker of the House would be an awful and dangerous situation. But the potential speakership of Jim Jordan, far-right member of the House Freedom Caucus, a loyal Trump ally, solves absolutely nothing. And in fact, it represents everything that is wrong with the Republican Party. I mean, Jim Jordan is the member of Congress who was arguably most involved in Donald Trump's coup. Earlier this week, January 6th committee vice chairwoman Liz Cheney laid this out for us again in a speech. Jim Jordan knew more about what Donald Trump had planned for January 6th than any other member of the House of Representatives. Jim Jordan was involved, was part of the conspiracy in which Donald Trump was engaged as he attempted to overturn the election. And if the Republicans decide that Jim Jordan should be the Speaker of the House, um, there will, and I, by the way, I don't think that's going to happen. I think he'll lose. But if they were to decide that, there would no longer be any possible way to argue that a group of elected Republicans could be counted on to defend the Constitution. Remember, Liz Cheney and the January 6th committee subpoenaed Jim Jordan. They wanted to know more about what he did know, what he did in the run-up to January 6th, and he just flat out ignored it. So he never got the truth from a man who they believed to be a key witness in the investigation, as Vice Chair Cheney said at the time. I think that uh, Congressman Jordan may well be a material witness. Uh, he's somebody who was uh, involved in a number of meetings in the lead up to uh, what happened on January 6th, uh, involved in planning for January 6th, uh, certainly for the objections that day, as he said publicly. Uh, so he may well be a material witness. Jim Jordan is also one of the Republican lawmakers uh, who returned to the House chamber after they were all escorted out, right, into safe spaces. <laughs> literally. And uh, after the violent sacking of the Capitol, when they came back in, who then voted in favor of Donald Trump's coup. And just five days later, Trump rewarded his loyal foot soldier with the Medal of Freedom. So Jim Jordan is one of the most MAGA devoted members of the caucus, the same group of people that produced the very situation we are in now with a destructive, ungovernable Republican majority in the House. In the words of former Speaker John Boehner, he is a political terrorist. You call some of these members political terrorists? Oh, yeah. Jim Jordan, especially. My colleague from Ohio. I just never saw a guy who spent more time tearing things apart and never building anything, never putting anything together. One of the ways Jim Jordan tears things apart is by fanning the flames of discord on Fox News. Jordan has made no less than, and this is an accurate number as far as we can tell, uh, 565 appearances on Fox in a little over six years. And that's just on weekdays, okay? He might as well have his own weekly program. In fact, Jordan has made more appearances on Fox than any other sitting member of Congress since Media Matters began counting back in 2017. By comparison, his main competitor for speaker, Steve Scalise of Louisiana, has been on less than 300 times. All of which is to say a Jim Jordan speakership would be a near worst case scenario. He is a destructive force, a political terrorist, in the words of a, a colleague, John Boehner, a guy who is willing to destroy American democracy for Donald Trump. 
anyone who endorses Jordan and any member who votes for him is affirmatively voting for a coup plotter, an election denier, and a foe of American democracy. And that is especially true for the 18 House Republicans representing districts that were carried by Joe Biden. People like David Schweikert in Arizona, Mike Garcia and Young Kim in California, Nick LaLota, George Santos, remember that guy? Mike Lawler, Mark Molinaro, all in New York. All those people you see up on their screen, are they gonna vote for Jim Jordan? A vote for Jordan from any of them, from any Republican, but especially from these vulnerable members, is a vote for a MAGA extremist. It is a proxy vote for Donald Trump. Donald Trump's anointed him. Heck, it's a vote for Donald Trump and Matt Gates, who have both endorsed him. It's not clear if the Republican Party understands the problem they have. In a crystal clear example of their total oblivion, earlier today, this is too good, I can't believe this, we learned the candidates for speaker we're going to have a debate on Fox News on television. Now, keep in mind, Fox and the right-wing media ecosystem is largely responsible for the current state of the Republican Party. They have produced a movement so obsessively focused on trolling and attention that it has no governing vision. It's essentially a, a media production. A Fox News debate for Speaker was kind of a perfect idea in that respect, but a terrible idea on the merits. Such a terrible idea, it sparked an immediate backlash, even from within the House Republican caucus. One moderate House Republican told Axios, quote, it's the height of idiocy. A few hours later, both Jim Jordan and Steve Scalise backed out. Fox had to delete the press release from their website. But debate or no debate, the Republican caucus still has all of the same problems. They had when they deposed Kevin McCarthy. The same problems they had when they elected Kevin McCarthy. The hard right, burn it all down base is not going anywhere. The party is still run by Donald Trump, a uniquely malevolent, dangerous force in American politics who wants to end the constitutional republic as we know it. None of that has been solved. None of it will be solved by Speaker Jordan or Speaker Scalise if either of them can get enough votes to win the gavel. But Republicans are going to have to elect someone to run one of the two houses of the United States Congress and keep the government functioning. We'll just have to wait and see because, frankly, I have no idea what happens next.